Hi everyone, it's Chris here from the Southwest Shooters. Oops, I don't have my microphone on. Hi everyone, it's Chris here from the Southwest Shooters and in this little video I'm going to do a review of my Daystate Renegade. Now, I'm a massive fan of Daystate guns. Okay, I've had a Pulsar and I've had a and I have a Red Wolf and I recently acquired this because they stopped making them and I wanted one so I bought one sold some guitars and I bought this and I'm going to talk you through some of the specs of the gun some of the things that it can do and I'll show you some groupings so this is a ballpup gun it was released as a replacement for the Mark IV by Daystate in about 2016 and it was released in conjunction with the Pulsar. Now the Pulsar and the Renegade are famous for being somewhat electronic in nature. This Renegade has an electronic trigger which bears a striking resemblance to the electronic trigger on the Red Wolf. But what it doesn't have is the, um, the electronic action. The action on this gun is mechanical. And what that means is that it feels like a, like a standard mechanical gun when you are uh, putting a new pellet in the chamber. And what that means is that the sort of mechanics, whatever it is, twist the pellet in the chamber around and then get your next shot ready. So there's like a bit more work to do than if you're using a Pulsar or if you're using a Red Wolf and I assume a Delta Wolf as well. But it doesn't feel bad at all. It feels nice, but it's just um, something you need to get used to if you're used to the ele electronics of either of those guns. Now, this gun is humor regulated and i think what that means is that means that, that you're going to have a more consistent shot count pellet on pellet so what i mean by that is uh consistent shot count was nonsense more consistency over the shot string so that means that you're going to have more consistent shots all the way through rather than there being a curve in your power banding which is pretty cool The gun uh, fills up at that end using a fill probe and um, why am I putting a new pellet in? Um, and at the end of the gun there is the uh, manometer which tells you how many how much pressure in bar there are left in the gun. Lovely. And why do I keep filling it up? And from a full charge, which is 250 bar in this gun, which is more than any gun I've ever owned, you should be able to get about 150 pellets, I think. Which is really good. Okay, that's a lovely amount of shots. That's, that's a good amount. The gun is extremely comfortable. You'll notice that it's quite high here on my... Uh, my stand but that's okay like i can still hit what i'm aiming for and i'm about 32 meters away pellet on pellet uh the gun has a little kind of spirit level a bubble there which i'm not actually using right now if i'm being totally honest with you i'm ignoring it so that means i'm canting way to the left if you are listening to the spirit level or, or taking note of the spirit level, I'm not. Okay, I am just, um, I'm very impressed with that. I'm just uh, shooting in by feel, by doing it naturally. The gun is extremely accurate. Okay, you can see the groupings just down there and as I'm talking to you and believe me I'm having to really concentrate whilst trying to review a gun and shoot it as well um, I'm very impressed 
with the accuracy of this gun. I'll be honest with you, it takes a little bit of getting used to compared to the Red Wolf. Very impressed. It takes a little bit of getting used to compared to the Red Wolf because it's so small, but it only feels smaller. The actual um, barrel length, I think, is pretty much the same. And certainly when it comes to the accuracy of the gun, I don't notice any sort of difference. Okay, it's exactly the same. The gun also comes with a single shot tray, or an SST. So I'm going to use that for a little bit. This gun has an Optizan EVX scope on it. And I've got to be honest with you, whenever I use scopes, I normally have them in at the highest magnification. And this one is at times 20. I've got to be honest with you, I'm exceptionally happy with this gun. Okay. Now, in terms of a, of a review, like, I mean, I'm always going to try and be honest. I've been spoilt a little bit by the, the Red Wolf. I prefer, if I'm being totally honest with you, the electronic loading mechanism of the Red Wolf. But that's not to say this is bad. It's not bad at all. It's just slightly different. It's more traditional in a way, but I've got to be honest with you, it wouldn't really bother me in the slightest. The biggest attraction, for me at least, on this gun is the electronic trigger. Okay, now I'm going to make sure it's safe, which it is. Um, I'm going to just take you through a shot here using the electronic trigger. Now, it's very, very light. Very light indeed. That was so light, I wasn't going to do that one again. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, you've got to be very, very delicate on this trigger, and I actually like it. Okay, so the first stage, you are just touching it ever so slightly. That shot before, I, I, I rushed it and it went a little bit too quick. Very, very light trigger on this gun. Um, and my hunch would be that that is going to translate into, once you get used to it, less of a pull. And what I mean by that is, for a beginner, and I'm kind of still in my first year of getting into this quite seriously now, uh, there could be a tendency to rush sometimes. But this gun is going to want to try and slow you down and calm you down a bit. So there we go. It's just that much of a movement. Boom. I am going to leave the regulator where it is. I've got no need or any desire to change it whatsoever. I'm very, very happy with it. Now, just to finish up, and this is going to be a bit of a test here, you can see on that middle splatter target, there are some numbers that, I, that haven't been shot yet. So what I'll try and do to finish up, I'll try and see if I can shoot one of those numbers. Now I'm using Professor Ballinger's technique here. Boom. Okay. Thank you, Professor Ballinger. I've never done that before. And that's something that's really unique to him. I see him holding the over the gun, over the butt of the gun like that. I uh, love this gun. I'll make no apologies for saying that I'm a Day State fanboy. I think they're the best guns that you can buy. Okay, I've never had a single problem with any of the Day States that I've owned. Um, hopefully, the collection will grow as things carry on. But um, I love this gun. All right, you can see how accurate it is. Over, it's 32 meters away. And I've been talking to you as I've been doing this review. Um, I'm particularly happy with that last shot.
and I'm particularly grateful to Professor Ballinger for um, he's he's an inspiration. He's he's someone to to shoot with. Um, I got this from Crack Shots in Newton Abbott, and Crack Shots in Newton Abbott is a fantastic shop. Um, the staff are super friendly there, right? Super friendly, and they benefit from having a range upstairs, a twenty meter indoor range. And they're very happy for people to, if they're looking to buy a gun, to test out the guns in their indoor range. I didn't test this out when I bought it. <laughs> I knew as soon as I picked it up and shouldered it for, again for the first time, I had a Pulsar previously, that I was going to buy it because I, I love the feel of it so much. And I think you can agree. Well, at least I'm happy with the accuracy. You may be a better shot than me, but that's cool, you know. Um, and Crack Shots is a really fantastic shop um i'll put their link in the description uh because i think that they'll be worth checking out they've got an amazing website i know that they do deliveries and uh yeah i think you should check them out that's it for this video i'm gonna leave it there hopefully you've enjoyed me trying to talk about the gun um, I'll just do a couple other things. Uh, the manometer is there. It's located there on the gun. Uh, very easy to read. Nice big um, dials. And the regulator is located there. I have no need to change that. Um, in some ways, if I'm being honest, I think that really it is only a personal preference as to which one you would prefer. I have no need for the electronic brain inside of the Red Wolf. I don't do anything other than put it on high power and then go. Uh, I know that this is ran off the nine volt, uh, slight little square battery, little square batteries. Uh, it's amazing. Super happy with it on a calm evening when there's no wind, I think it really takes it into its own with its accuracy. That's it. Take care. Thank you for all the support. And we'll see you soon with another video. Bye bye. So I thought it might be fun because it's such a still evening to take the gun out a bit further. We're at 45 meters now. And I've drawn a little blue circle on a piece of paper. And we're just looking at the grouping. Okay, I'm going for the center of the blue circle. I haven't zeroed it in again. And this is good fun. I can't actually see where they're going in the scope, so hopefully the other camera will pick it up for you. Sometimes you got to do the day state flip where you get the pellet in the wrong way. A couple more just to see where we're at. Yeah, it's just just the groups just a little bit lower really. As you would expect, I suppose. Let's see if I can try and hit the blue circle. I don't know if that hit. I can't actually distinguish. My eyes, unfortunately, aren't good enough, even with a scope.
I can't really tell anymore. But anyway, there's a little bit of evidence of what the gun shoots like at about 45, yeah, 45 meters. See you soon.